Okay, we'll call it to order this November the 20th, 2019 meeting of the Franklin County Commission. Roll call. Commissioner Sotomayor? Present. Commissioner Waymeyer? Present. Chair Howard? Present. Vice Chair Dickinson? Present. Commissioner Dunn? Present. You'd all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance and please remain standing for the invocation that will be led by Pastor Leonard Chesbro of the New Life in Christ Church. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for this day you've given us. We thank you for the many blessings you bestow upon us. Thanksgiving is more than just about turkey. It's about what you do for us, Lord. You sacrificed your son for us so we could have life and have life more abundantly. Lord, I pray, God, we're thankful for our county workers. We're thankful for all the people that serve this county and just bless each one. We ask your protection up on the sheriff's department. We ask your protection up on the fire department. We ask your protection on the police department. We ask your protection up on the EMTs and different ones of service, Lord. And just bless each family, bless each one in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Dan. Oh, you kidding me. My computer just went on. Here you go. Second. Okay. Anything on correspondence and organizational business? No, sir. Okay. It takes us to public comment. A citizen desiring to speak on an item not on the agenda may do so at this time. Discussion is limited to five minutes, and the commission will not take action or discuss items at this time. Discussion should be limited to matters of county commission business, and public comment is not permitted in regard to personnel matters or on pending legal matters. Items introduced under public comment may become agenda items at a later date. Jack. Bull Goodman. Come up and state your name and address for the commission. I'm Lowell Goodman. I live at 2228 Haskell Road. Uh, I'd like to address a little issue that happened last Thursday. Uh, just north of Haskell Road on Louisiana Road, an attempt was made to raise the elevation of the road. Um, it was a great idea, needed it, been washing out. Only problem was road department brought up dirt, dumped it on the top of the gravel, didn't roll it in, didn't pack it in. It's a bog now. This evening when it rains, it'll be impassable. Um, I was here seven weeks ago to address the conditions of our county roads. And quite frankly, not a thing has changed. Um, I'm looking at you five now. I, I, it's your fault. He's not getting it done. The, there's been numerous people here addressing their issues with the roads. Nothing's happening. And I'm looking at you folks to address it and get something done. This waste of money Thursday is ridiculous. Now it's going to have to be all dug out and redone again because you, did, you drive through it and you sink about four or five inches. That's not the way to build roads around here. So I'm looking at you folks to take this situation and address it and fix it. Thank you. It takes us to the consent agenda. Items today on the consent agenda that need considered and approved are claim vouchers in the amount of $868,070.94, tax change orders in the amount of a positive $75.44, and commission meeting minutes for November the 6th, 2019, and also need to consider and approve the solicitation of bids for financing of three 2019 12-14 AWD motor graders. Look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I would make that motion. Second. Motion and a second. Yeah. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay. 
It takes us to items of business. The first item of business today is to consider and approve the appointment of Dr. Ryan Cobbs to the 4th Judicial District Corrections Advisory Board for a term of two years beginning November the 20th, 2019 and ending November the 20th, 2021. Dustin. Good morning, Commissioners. Dustin Brown and Community Corrections. Joining me today is Dr. Ryan Cobbs, the superintendent of USD 290, uh, who is seeking appointment to the 4th Judicial District Corrections Advisory Board. Uh, that board is currently without a member that should be representing edu education. Uh, statutorily, we need that member, and so Dr. Cobbs has expressed interest. The other members that are currently on the board have supported this appointment as well, so today we are seeking your appointment. Yeah, I uh, served on FCDC with Dr. Cobbs and worked at the school with Dr. Cobbs for several years, and no doubt in my mind that would be an excellent choice. Any other yeah. comments on this? Go over for the benefit. Anybody watching real quick what the advisory board does? Absolutely. Uh, so the 4th Judicial District Corrections Advisory Board is something that's put in place statutorily to oversee community corrections. Uh, community corrections is a state and local partnership. We follow state standards as well as the county policies that are in place. Uh, there's a lot of things that we have to do that are mandated by the state. So this advisory board is in place to make sure that we're doing those things as, as we're supposed to. But also this advisory board is, some, is a group of people who should be putting some input in as to what practices they see best practices in their fields whether it be mental health education law, law enforcement etc uh, and so the, somebody representing the field of education would have that voice and that input as to what they see from the schools if there's any trends or any, <coughs> any current practices that we should be aware of from education we want to have that input the corrections advisory board cover both adult and juveniles it does Nothing else. I'd like to make the motion to appoint Dr. Ryan Cobbs to the 4th Judicial, Judicial District Corrections Advisory Board for the term of two years. Okay, have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you. <coughs> okay, second item today consider and approve revitalization properties for approval. Janet. So as you guys can see from the memo that we've received from the city of Ottawa, um, there's a number of properties that are um, being um, remodeled and built around the city of Ottawa that uh, meet all the current requirements of the neighborhood revitalization program. Um, so when we review these properties, um, when the commission reviews these properties, that doesn't necessarily mean that they are going to be in the program. That just means they meet all the preliminary requirements and then they have to complete the project and meet the ending requirements of the project. So these properties have all met the preliminary requirements and are um, ready to move forward in the program and then they will send me the um, supporting documents at the end <coughs> when they meet the ending requirements. So they're just seeking your approval on these today to enter the program if they meet all the requirements. Done this for quite a while and seems to be working very well and benefiting uh, everyone involved. So, any other questions on this? Would not look for a motion to approve the revitalization properties. Motion to approve. Motion is a second. Second. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Yes. Chair Howard. Yes. Okay. Item number three, consider and approve the Heritage Trust Fund application. Brandon. Good morning. Uh, Wayne Duderstadt has been working hard on that uh, uh, heritage application um, for the uh, uh, clock in the courthouse. Um, he had a couple of questions um, for us, so the uh, the document that was sent to you guys um, was incomplete. Incomplete. I was hoping to have a completed one um, by today's meeting, but we didn't quite get there. So um, this is just kind of a first viewing, and then uh, when we get those questions answered, we'll be looking for a signature, uh, probably uh, from you, Mr. Howard, on that, so uh, we can get that submitted. The uh, due date for that is uh, December second, so it's coming up pretty quick. Um, 
And frankly, this isn't something that had to come before the board. I asked Brandon to bring it here. Um, it gives us a platform, one, to thank Wayne for all the hard work he's put into this. Um, certainly something he did not have to do, but he has been incredibly helpful with this. Janet's been incredibly helpful. Brandon's been helpful. Um, I think we've got a real good shot at this. So um, I think the packet that we've put together is, is great. Um, we will finish out the, the application. If you want it to come back and you would like to formally approve it, you certainly can. But I'm also authorized as your legal representative to sign it as well. But just wanted to let you know where it's at. We're about to wrap it up and, and we'll take it from there. So. Yeah, I started looking over it. It's not like a one paragraph thing. There's a lot to this and everything. I I personally think it's something we need to do and I I don't see any reason that it needs to come back here. I think uh if we have a consensus that have you just take care of it. once you have it ready, then sign it and, and go with it, is my opinion. I see Don nodding, Colton. Yeah, but I do say I'm, I'm really, really glad that he jumped in to do this because this is very extensive and somebody that doesn't know what they're doing, I'm sure that he made it good for us to do well, that. Well, he's successfully done this before, so he's a great resource to use. Talking 60-some thousand, one, or maybe 80-some thousand to totally do this project. And uh, it was in the $70,000 range. And, and it would uh, definitely... At the total project cost listed as eighty five thousand two hundred and sixty and the grant request is sixty eight thousand two hundred and eight. So if we get this that would knock a big chunk of that out. If, if we yes. don't get this it may be sitting like it is for a while. You can so. restore it again though. Yeah, I believe we have a consensus for you to okay. take care of when it gets there. So thanks, Brandon. Thank you, Brandon. On these, Derek, on these kind of deals where there's, you know, 50 pages of documents and you can't read them, should they be, should they be uh, in our agenda? Have all those documents like that? You uh, can't see them and you can't read them. Are they not attached to your agenda? Oh, like there's yeah, some written, handwritten. Uh, that's papers. a task, but you can't read it because it's. But it is part of the grant, uh, the application, though. Like it's too small? Is that what do you mean? You can't. It's attached, but you can't read. It just didn't scan real clean. Oh. Yeah, when you scan it, you can't read. Okay. You can't read all the handwriting, and, and I didn't know if it was necessary to read. Uh, just work on the contrast on the scan, and it ought to be readable. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can get you guys a clean scan. That's certainly no issue. Um, yeah, that's no problem. I don't know that. I'm not sure what the handwritten portions were, if those were just letters of support or. <laughs> Want to look at it? Well, I. I forgot it. I think they're photos. I think is what. No, 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 no. There's like four, five pages of handwritten, but it, it, it's from the deed book. Yeah. Okay. It's okay. from the deed book, yeah. and that's why. Yeah. So. It's definitely wrote a long time ago. It's just yeah. really heavy cursive. It's a lot of it. Yeah. Okay. It's gonna read. Yeah. Okay. Okay, yeah, I can get you a clean deed so that you can. I didn't know if it was necessary to be be there. Well, he must have felt it was necessary to attach it, the information that was on there. Um, it's something that needs to be attached to the grant application, but I don't know that it's, you know, the details on the deed specifically. I, I mean, it's not, there's nothing about that particular deed or the language in it that I guess is, pertinent for the board's purposes that's just to let them know where ownership of the clock tower it's just an attachment yeah yeah, yeah. So. Okay. okay moving on to item number four concern and approve an extension to the 2019 pomona law enforcement contract sheriff um what before you is just a contract extension as you're aware um, Pomona contracts uh, that council contracts with this board for law enforcement services which are provided by the sheriff's office that contract currently is set to expire at the end of this month um, there was a desire um, on behalf of the of the city clerk and our county clerk to have the contract run um, consistent with our 
fiscal year, which is also the calendar year. Um, so this is simply just to extend the current contract by one month so that we can get back on that on the proper cycle. Don't know how it got off for sure, um, but all this does is keeps everything in place, but it, um, it allows uh, my office to continue to provide those services for, uh, for the remainder of this year. Um, there's no price tag um, attached to this at all. It's just a matter of kind of getting it back on track. And this was approved um, by the Pomona City Council at their November 4th um, council meeting. So it'll be a one month extension? Yes, sir. Any questions on that? Look for a motion to approve a one month extension to the 2019 Pomona law enforcement contract. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to <laughs> second. Mr. Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Sotomayor? Yes. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, item number five, consider and approve the 2020 Pomona law enforcement contract. Okay, um, this contract um, will run from um, January 1 through December 31 of 2020. Um, there are a couple other, aside from the date changes, it, what, uh, one thing that changes in here is the due dates on, the, um, on their payments. Um, the City of Pomona will still continue to make quarterly payments, but all four of those payments will happen they will make those payments and the county will receive those payments all within the uh, 2020 fiscal year. Um, so it kind of cleans things up on, uh, for, for record keeping on both entities. Um, the amount does increase um, to the total contract uh, cost is $63,604. Um, and so that reflects an increase over the current a contract of $1,246 over the year. Um, I have also presented this to the Pomona City Council and they, and they did approve it at the same meeting there on November 4th. Um, it does not change any of the uh, services that, that we provide. Um, just as a reminder, through this contract, it is a, uh, it's a contract for services. We are in no way um, do we work for the city of Pomona during this time? It's a complete contract. So everyone still stays under operational control of the sheriff's office. Um, but as part of, as part of this, I do meet, um, regularly with the uh, city council, the mayor and the city clerk to, to make sure that we're providing the services that they, that they're, that they are contracting for and kind of just work with them as best we can on things. You said it'll be paid in four payments over 2020? That's correct. Those payments are sent, I believe, to the clerk's office, and then um, those go in as a uh, general fund revenue. You have to list all the officers in your organization. I do. Oh, well, any um, any uh, certified law enforcement that that would be making uh, that would be enforcing those city ordinances um, have to be on on the roster. Um, so when we have a change, I update that, provide that to the uh, to the city clerk. Um, they provide us a uh, we provide our people a commission card. They're certified, you know, commissioned to do to do law enforcement in Franklin County. Um, they can enforce state statutes by that. But this contract allows um, us to enforce the city ordinances of the city for the city of Pomona. So they have to issue a commission card signed by the mayor to each of our members. It's a legality hoop to jump through, but that's what that's about. Mm -hmm. But this does not take away from any authority that deputies already have. We can still enforce um, all the state ordinances. Um, this just adds to the fact that they can also in four city ordinances over there. Any other questions on that? No questions on that, but I do uh, see that you are participating in No Shave November. I am. I am. Yeah. My, my wife's ready for uh, the end of the month. <laughs> end of the month, right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'd look for a motion to approve the 2020 contract with Pomona in the amount of 63 
$1,604 to be paid in four payments over the 2020 fiscal year. Do I have a motion to approve that contract? I would make that motion. Motion is at a second. Mr. Saldemeyer? Yeah. Commissioner Waymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Thank you, Chair. Item number six, consider for approval accepting the proposal from Kello Construction to perform work on Tennessee Road and Rock Creek Road. David. Commissioners, we, um, um, we have the opportunity to fix uh, a couple of locations that have given us trouble for a long time. Um, we've got a couple of areas on Tennessee Road uh, near the bridge south of Reno Road uh, where we've got um, that's a, there's a quarry uh, not too far away, so that receives a lot of heavy truck traffic. Uh, so in the northbound lanes, uh, we've got some wheel rutting, and we've also got some potholes that need to be addressed. Um, and then on Rock Creek Road, um, uh, there's a bridge, oh, where is it at? Um, uh, east of Oregon Road, down in the bottoms where it, it has flooded uh, a couple of times this year. We have similar situation where we have some wheel rutting uh, in the, well, in both lanes actually, and some potholes that uh, we've tried to fix with um, cold pack uh, uh, patch and even some hot hot mix uh, asphalt. None of that is held up, um, and so we have an opportunity. Kilo still has their asphalt plant operating and they have uh, a little bit of time to slip in and take care of these two areas. Um, and so I would ask that uh, you approve this, this proposal from them. Uh, we'll have uh, some uh, leveling course in a couple of the locations and then we'll have some full depth patch in others uh, that should hopefully take care of these uh, situations for uh, a few years anyway. We'll, probably always have uh, issues in these locations, but this will certainly um, uh, take care of a problem spot now uh, before winter gets here, before it you know, gets intense. So um, I would look for um, approval to move forward with that. The total cost of this is? $33,150. Janet and I have been working with David, and primarily Janet. We're meeting with him on Friday to discuss certain budget things. Suffice to say, though, his budget is in great shape. Um, so this is, this is something that can be done very easily from a financial perspective. I know the guys have tried several times on the one section there, on our, and it just, you know, it's just, you know, they, they just can't do a good enough job. They just won't allow it. And that's flooded four times this year, which hopefully never happened again, but it has. And uh, I can see what you're talking about would be the only way we're probably going to get it under hand on it. I'd like to make a motion to approve. Good. We have a motion to approve the Proposal from Kellogg Construction in the amount of $33,150 for work on Tennessee Road and Rock Creek Road. As a, as, as a second. Commissioner Raymeyer? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Dunn? Yes. Commissioner Saldemeyer? Yes. Chair Howard? Yes. Okay, it takes us to staff reports. Derek? <clears throat> Last week, I. Uh, got the final draft of the tax sale from our attorney who's conducting that for us. Given the Cove's properties being on it, it is a massive document. Um, that being said, um, I've reviewed it. I think it looks great. Um, my understanding is that the filing is imminent. Um, if it doesn't happen this week, then I think it certainly will next and that will start the process. And so, um, I know the city's been working to come up with a mechanism to wipe out the specials on those properties so that they become more marketable. So hopefully that all goes off without a hitch and, and maybe we get some development going out there. Um, we received a check here, it's been a week or so ago now, from Advent Health for $35,000 for the first three months of rent for suite one and two over there. 
I bring that up. Um, they, they've given us a lot of compliments. I know they are incredibly grateful for allowing to you for allowing them to use the space. I do want to put this back on your radar, though, because we've talked about a remodel there. I mean, obviously, this isn't a permanent home for HR. Um, we've got Casey comfortable. I mean, she has a primary office out at the visitor center, and she's got some space in the old courthouse. But I think I would like to discuss at a study session coming up what a potential remodel of some of that space looks like because I do think we could set it up in a way that's uh, much better for us moving forward. Part of that is trying to assess whether or not Advent wants any of that space. I'm struggling to get a straight answer out of them there, but I will continue to try and do that, but just know that that's something that we'll probably put before you here uh, oh, in the next month or so to at least start that discussion. Um, this is, I believe, this is Casey's third week, um, the start of her third week on the job. She has already got far more to do than she can possibly handle in a short term. So um, we're happy with that. Um, we knew that would be the case. Um, but it seems like with each passing day, we, we have department heads or electeds. It's like the light bulbs going on and they're realizing, oh, wow, like this is, we could totally utilize this position to do this or, and so I think, um, I think Casey's going to be very busy, um, but she's doing a great job. So I'm looking forward to seeing what we can accomplish there. Monday, uh, I do want to have a study session. Um, Alan is, well, Alan's been talking about burn permits for the better part of five years, but we've met recently to discuss the burn permit process and how that can be revised, and, and he's got some good ideas there that we want to share with the board. So on Monday, we will have that discussion. That's all I have. Okay. Well, Casey, we'll just go right to you then. Okay, Brandon. Quick update: um, The roofers just uh, finished the roof of the jail uh, last week, so that project is wrapped up, and they're, they're going to do a final inspection on it uh, tomorrow, and then they will be done and out of there. Um, the visitor center roof will be starting probably within the next couple weeks, um, pretty dependent on the weather, so we don't really have a, an exact start date on that, but that one's going to be starting here pretty soon. Hey, if you're interested, um, and you all, or some of you were up there for the canvas the other day, but if you go to the historic courtroom, you can see the, it gives a great view of the job they've done on the roof. Um, I don't know if any of you can recall what it used to look like, but it looks, I mean, at least to the layman's eye, it looks far better now than it used to. So you might get up there and check that out. Stop by Janet's office when you do and say hi. And I'll be there today doing vouchers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Sheriff? Sheriff, I was just thinking what you'd look like if your beard ever caught Brandon's. <laughs> so. <laughs> um, a couple of weeks ago, I had mentioned that during our uh, promotion process, we always have people come up with ideas and, and their vision, and that uh, the one that Sergeant Vega had was the SRO program, which is uh, a temporary part-time SRO program, and that's still going well. We also had had a promotion process uh, in the jail, and um, one of our corporals that was selected in that process, Maddie Garner, um, had noted that um, she felt like we needed more, um, a couple, we needed to add some AEDs um, at strategic locations in our jail. We do have some in the jail, but she thought we would be better served and that we could provide a better service if we had more AEDs. So um, they wrote a grant for that through Walmart, and I, uh, was, we've been notified that we received a $2,000 grant from Walmart Foundation to, um, to fund that, uh, the AED, the addition of the AED program there. So. Uh, wanted to uh, say thanks publicly to Walmart for that but also to give you know give props to our to our people because uh, they're always looking for ways to to improve the service we provide and, and do those things and uh, 
and took the initiative to, to actually go out and secure the funding for it too. So uh, I just wanted to give them the, the credit for that. Also uh, last Friday, uh, Lieutenant Laswell graduated from the uh, command school, um, the Law Enforcement Leadership Academy down at uh, Hutch. It's a the year long program. And uh, he, he's assured me that he learned a lot and it was a very beneficial course to him. Um, I know that I still keep in touch with the people that I went through uh, that class with as well. He will also be graduating um, from the certified public manager part of that program up in Topeka at the, uh, at the State House um, this month as well. So uh, congratulate him um, on his accomplishments and uh, he's doing great things in the jail. We just uh, look, look to see that continue and this, this program and this training that we um, sent him to is, is, plays a big part in that. So I just uh, say thank you for, uh, for funding those type of training opportunities for our people and uh, I think that the county benefits greatly by, by, what they, by all that information that we bring back. So um, other than that, if you guys have any questions for me, I'd be happy to answer. Are you still full full? Uh, yes, uh, I told you the other day we had 90 um, inmates. We have 18 farmed out um, because um, 90 is way over max. Uh, we're still a little bit over what our actual hard bed number is um, with what we with who we have in you know the numbers that we have in house. Um, but we're we're working that right now. Um, I had mentioned to you previously that we're trying to figure out why our counts are so much higher. Um, nobody, we can't, our people have bonds assigned to them. They're not high, they're not extraordinary bonds. Um, they're not any higher than the, than the counties around us. Um, we don't really, there's nothing to really put your finger on and say this is, this is the deal. Um, the, the studies that we're showing though is that, uh, a lot of a lot of the crime that we have is is it's the alcohol and drugs play a factor in that. I don't know that we have a worse drug problem here than the counties around us. I don't know if it's uh, the prosecution's mindset is different. Uh, we don't really know, um, but we've been looking into it, trying to figure it out. And when it comes down to it, it's just we have people with sitting in jail that have bonds that just aren't posting bond for for whatever reason, so they're not required to, but uh, constitutionally we're required to set a, have a reasonable bond set for them and, that, and the courts are doing that, so. Jeff, I have heard from several people and, and, and I think this is a great thing, but that the county attorney and his staff are aggressively prosecuting and clearing their backlog that they inherited. Do you think that's playing a role in your Numbers. The backlog part probably not, but the current part could be. That could be playing playing a role in, in that, um, because, but and we and we work with them on a on a regular basis on those things. So, um, perhaps. <laughs> well, and and one thing I'd ask the board to keep in mind is. You know, when Jeff has numbers like this, you think, man, we're spending a fortune in farm outs, which is true, but that's also 90 bodies, each of whom may have health problems at any given time that the county is ultimately responsible for paying. So um, it's tough. I mean, we talk about it all the time, but um, and it only gets tougher as his numbers increase. So just keep that in mind. Do you, do you have regular training on these AEDs? We have annual training. Well, we have the initial training when someone is hired to make sure that they are CPR and AED certified. Um, and that those classes are done um, through with uh, the instructors from EMS. And um, then we have an annual training to keep everybody to keep everybody up, up to date on those. We also have some other first aid training. We had people come in um, to give basic uh, life-saving stuff with tourniquets and things like that. So, uh, can, training is a is an ongoing, ongoing process. What is, what is one of those costs now? They do. I I would love to give you a, an answer on that, Roy, and I I don't really know. For, I don't really know right off the top of my head, but they're, you know, I know that they're 
around a thousand dollars or just over a thousand dollars the last time that I had checked but I don't know if they found a better price somewhere um, we usually we typically work with we'll check with EMS because they buy a lot of the, these type of things but we also check with um, advanced correctional health care which is who we have our contract for uh, medical services in the jail and lots of times we are able to buy um, to buy this type of equipment at a better rate through our provider um, and because the county does contract with them EMS also has the opportunity to purchase through through them as well so the county can see cost savings not just within the jail with them I think we've had a request to put one in in this building before maybe two but that's all okay <laughs> thank, thank you, you. Dustin, do you have anything else to share? I have one additional thing that I would like to make everyone aware of. Uh, we have had a couple of people from my office or people that we contract with trained to deliver a program to uh, the community, and we plan to roll this out early next year. Uh, it's titled The Parent Project, and it's to give parents skills uh, in dealing with adolescents who are displaying some behaviors that may lead them to involvement in the criminal justice system. Uh, we understand that there are some other parenting skills out there, some, some classes and courses to help early childhood development and things like that, but we found a program through the state that specifically deals with adolescent behaviors, and we hope to roll this out as a prevention type of program to get parents the skills that they need so their kids don't end up with us in the system. And actually, I'd like to thank Dr. Cobbs for his uh, willingness to step up and, and be a part of this program as we look to find community partners to uh, bring this out to the community. So I just wanted to put that on your radar. We plan to roll that out oh, in the next few months or so. So thank you. Thank you. David. Okay, commissioners. Um, yesterday, we had a walkthrough on Highway 59 and Kingman project. Um, that um, there, there's just a few punch list items left to uh, take care of. Um, uh, they are working on uh, striping, hopefully today, uh, and some ditch work on the east side of uh, 59 along Kingman, uh, and then some final signage. The signage probably won't get installed until next week, uh, but we do expect that um, it will be fully open to traffic by the end of this week. Um, some of the last minute work uh, that we've got to do, our folks are actually installing a um, um, entrance to some farmland on the south side of Kingman. We met with the farmer yesterday to discuss placement of that. Felt like it'd be a little cheaper for our own folks to, uh, since we have the tubes uh, in our yard, uh, to put that in and, and uh, cover it up. The contractor is already doing the ditch work, so it's just a matter of us. Uh, placing the tube and getting it covered up. Once they're out of there, we'll come back and, and put the rock in and, and that sort of thing. So uh, we worked with with the contractor and, and the farmer to um, schedule and approve that work. I have to say that um, uh, the Hams company has done an outstanding job on this project. Um, you know, there's been some things to, to work through, but there, there always is uh, on these uh, types of projects, but they've been uh, very good about communication. Uh, we've had uh, biweekly uh, status meetings, so any issues that arise, uh, we're able to deal with those uh, immediately and, and kind of head them off before they become big issues. So I'm, I'm really pleased with how that project is coming along. and. And they, um, their, their goal is to be completely out of there by next, uh, next Wednesday. We'll, we'll see if that happens. Um, Mother Nature always has a say in how those things go, but uh, they're going to finish on time and, and uh, get out of there, and we're going to have a, a good project for it. The Iowa Terrace project, um, we're still a couple of weeks away from being able to bid that project, um, so I don't really anticipate that work really getting off the ground until after Christmas, uh, which is not ideal, but um, um, it is what it is, and once we get a contractor on board, I think they'll be able to move right along provided weather conditions uh, hold up. I have a uh, pre-con meeting finally on the, the Finney Road uh, bridge where the wing walls have fallen off. Um, um, 
In fact, I'm going to leave here and head to that. So I'll know a little bit more about the schedule on that project uh, here shortly. Uh, but I expect them, once they get started, to, to move right along also. Uh, so we'll try to minimize the impact to the neighborhood by getting in and getting it done quickly. Um, and then the Pawnee Road Bridge, we have a project meeting on Friday uh, to um, uh, see how that, that is going. The last time I was out there, things to, seem to be finally progressing at a rapid pace. Uh, primarily do they, they finally had good weather to work in and so um, uh, but that doesn't necessarily relieve them of the time commitment they've got roughly 30 days uh, to, to finish it up um, we'll see if if um, ADOT allows them some some weather days on the end of that to make up for what they missed uh, with the, the flooding that occurred so those, uh, those projects are, I think they're all in, going to be in pretty good shape. Um, uh, some of the things that our road and bridge crews have been working on uh, since the last time uh, you had an update, uh, Virginia Road between Labette and Labette Terrace, the east side of that road coming down the hill. Um, uh, we had some, uh, some spots that were three to five feet deep right along the edge of the road. Uh, it created a kind of a dangerous situation. Uh, so in the last few weeks, we've gone in there and added material uh, down in the bottom of that to, to bring the elevation up, and then we reworked the, the entire ditch area. So that um, should be uh, in good shape by, uh, by the time that it winters over and, and really solidifies um, over this winter and for, be ready for next spring. So that, that's a much safer situation, um, and it looks pretty good, too. And then uh, Cloud Road uh, from just west of Eisenhower, clear through Missouri, that, that stretch of road, about a mile and a quarter or so, uh, had multiple washouts that uh, had occurred this year, uh, had some, some erosion in the ditches, um, just some significant, some very significant issues. So we, we, our folks have completely rebuilt that. In fact, uh, they should be finishing up today uh, getting the last of the gravel uh, placed on top. So they have um, um, they reworked all the ditches, they re reworked the road. Uh, we've had uh, quite, a, quite a number of our folks and a lot of our equipment out there, uh, including our, our roller and our, our, excuse me, our sheep's foot and our water truck and, and various other pieces of equipment um, uh, working on that project. It included um, uh, either resetting or uh, Replacing, I think there were five, uh, four, five, or six, uh, I can't remember the exact number of uh, culverts and crossroad tubes that have been uh, replaced or, or uh, fixed out there. Uh, we've also worked with the, the, the local farmer. Uh, there's some waterways through his property. Uh, we discussed um, working with him to make sure that the, we get positive flow away from our tubes. Uh, through his property into the, the waterways like it's meant to be. Uh, a lot of that through the erosion just wasn't happening and that, that contributed to the, uh, the issues with the road and the farmer recognized that and has uh, been gracious enough to work with us on that. So uh, that's a good project, uh, really make a big difference to the folks living in that area. Um, and then also we've worked on uh, several minimum maintenance road. It's harvest time so uh, farmers trying to get into their fields to, to uh, get their crops out. Um, we've been on down in the Peoria bottoms, uh, fixing some, uh, some pretty severe ruts through the flooding. And, and so we did a lot of grading work and uh, added some rock down in there so they could, um, so they wouldn't get their equipment stuck. Uh, so they'd be able to get in, in and out. Also worked on Finney Road west of Oregon for the very same reasons. Uh, we've got a few other locations that uh, we're gonna be working on in the coming days uh, for the same types of things. Uh, we fixed uh, a few washouts on Haskell, east of 59, um, and then uh, we've built, I think, four different uh, entrances and replaced a culvert at, in the Arkansas and Thomas Road area. Uh, this is all in addition to um, you know, the normal work that we do. We've hauled rock to seven of the nine blade districts 
Uh, the two that didn't get their normal rotation, one of them was in District 408, which is where the Cloud Road project is, so that blade operator's been tied up there. And then District 407, uh, that blade operator's actually been working on the Cloud Road project as well to help get that back in shape. So um, uh, in the last two weeks, uh, we've hit every district except for those two with our normal, normal rock uh, rotation. The other thing I'd like to say is uh, to the public comments this morning, that project is not completed. Uh, we still have material to add, and then we've got to rock it. Uh, depending on when they get done today on Cloud Road, they were scheduled to move over to that to, to work on that. So that's a project that is in progress. I was gonna address the public comment when it got to, to my turn on Commissioner comments, but while we're on that, I'm just going to also add in there that um, it's been a handful of people came in to talk about their roads and complain about their roads. A couple of them were on minimum maintenance roads. That has been addressed with them. I think they're happy about that. Also, I have had several people contact me, telling me that their roads are a lot better since they've been able to get on them and work in the dry weather. So I've had several people um, Appreciate what's being done and, and tell me that the roads are a lot better now than they were. Those people aren't going to come in and, and come up and talk about that. So, you know, we hear a handful from, on the negative side, but there's a lot out there on the positive side, too, that you're not going to hear from, uh, that we do hear from. So just wanted to throw that in while we're on that. So There's a lot of good work being done. There is a lot of work still to do. Yeah. We know that. Yes. We're not ready to stop or slow down. Yeah, we'll, we'll I think a lot of the loud voices you hear could be attributed to early political campaigning, uh, more than legitimate. Uh, but I think there's other motives on some of the some of the loudest ones. But uh, we're not ready to quit quit working hard. Either. We we've got um, um, we've got a lot of work ahead of us. We're going to be working on these things from uh, that occurred to us in this this year clear into next spring and summer. Uh, we recognize that. Uh, Cloud Road is, is an example of things that we are trying to do to be proactive uh, while the weather is still good to make improvements. Um, um, the, the, the other one that um, uh, there on Haskell that the gentleman was visiting about, that, that's another example of a, of a problem area that we are trying to, uh, trying to take care of. Um, as we have time and, and get to it. Uh, the roads um, are significantly better, the road surface. Now, you know, we can continue to have discussions on, on what happens on the edge of the road and in the ditches, but those, those issues um, um, are, they weren't created just this year. And so we are thinking about those things, and, and uh, as we get time, we will uh, make improvements. What do you think about sitting down maybe in a study session and coming up with a, I mean, I see ditching as one of our maintenance items that we've just gotten so far behind on that um, maybe you have a different perspective, that um, that's one of the big mountains we need to climb. Um, sitting down, setting an aggressive goal as far as um, ditching in the future and looking at ways we can get that done, whether, you know, bringing in a private contractor for some of it or um, temporarily hiring some staff or, you know, and I'm sure you see other goals that, you know, maybe that's not the top of your list, but I see, you know, getting water off the right away and getting back to where you have proper ditching. It yeah. just, there's thousands of miles. Well, there's close conceivably there's uh, 22 if there's a ditch on each side there's 2200 miles right. of ditch right and so one percent of that would be a yep. lot so. and I, I'm happy to do that um, uh, just so you know uh, in, in normal years we rebuilt just like we did you know we in my time here we've rebuilt uh, approximately two and a quarter miles of road uh, in a normal year uh, I'm told that that that's anywhere from 18 to 20 miles uh, uh, plus a year that that get that treatment. So in those in those in those miles, uh, they are rebuilding the road and doing all the ditch work associated with it. 
Um, and so that's, that's not insignificant, but whenever you compare it to the 2,200 miles, uh, whenever you're only getting 18 to 20. Um, oh, uh, total road system, I guess. Yeah, it's 1,100, so, so you're you know, getting. So yeah. we're getting 40 miles of, of ditch work done in a, in a regular year. Uh, it takes a long time to, uh, to get there. Uh, and then we also, you know, we have a, a large number of miles that uh, our road is the lowest sure. point around. You've got um, uh, on either side, you've got steep banks where they're in narrow right of ways uh, where our road, the edge of our road is essentially going to be the ditch no matter what. And so there's all kinds of, of reasons for uh, what we have out there. Uh, but to think that, or to say that we're not doing anything about it or we're not making improvements is, is not, uh, not accurate. I don't believe it to be accurate either, but I would like to, I think we're yeah. behind, and I'd like to yep. get us caught up to where we're not constantly struggling. We can... I, I, we want to help you get it done. Yes, and, and you know, we... Uh, um, my philosophy is to be proactive in everything that we do. Uh, and that is not, you know, we can't continue to do what we've always done and expect different results. Uh, uh, everybody realizes that, including our staff. So they are open, uh, we're open, uh, and we have thoughts and ideas on how we can make improvements, and, and we plan to. But, yeah, I'll, uh, we'll work on something here over the next uh, month or so and, and have something for you to, uh, to review. And if I could give some, and I don't think the board needs it by any stretch of the imagination, but just give some perspective. I mean, David is in his first year as our public works director. He inherited a department that in many ways was ran well, but in many ways needs a lot of changes. And so he's still in year one, which is not a lot of time. And what I normally tell my department heads is you take the first year to just get your feet under you and learn the operation, learn what you have, let alone go out and make a bunch of changes. So he's in his first year. He's also had a historic weather season. I mean, the <coughs> entire year has truly been historic in the amount of precipitation that we've had. So. Um, he's doing fine um, and and you know I, I completely agree with you cold I think creating a proactive approach is fantastic and I do think we need to be aggressive I just think I hope the public can understand where he's at have some empathy you put yourself in that position and you know what would we what would you be doing any different than David Lee has done and so I think he's doing a great job and and I think I think when we get some breaks from mother nature I think that we will start seeing the the fruits of what David's putting in place so personally I probably under my desk cowering but yeah um, I, I did see this morning on my way in that they had uh, right around the corner from me Eisenhower that they were working on that and I know just exactly where they're working on so yeah yep. they that, are that's definitely a, moving forward that's another one that I, I haven't mentioned uh, but we've got uh, another uh, we're working with uh, uh, the state on, on uh, changing some drainage patterns uh, on one of the fields and how to carry that water and we've met with landowners and uh, uh, we're working on a landowner agreement because we're going to be working off right away a little bit and, and uh, uh, getting the locates done. So here uh, later this week or early next week, we'll uh, be um, uh, adding some, uh, a tube and, or maybe two tubes and, or upsizing a couple of tubes and adding a, uh, an extra one in, a, in another location and getting in and uh, doing cleaning out uh, where we've had a, a ton of erosion and rock is washed into the into the field and into the creek and working with the landowner to retrieve all that. Um, uh, so we're again trying to be proactive to fix these uh, locations and and you know the credit really goes to the to the staff. They're the ones that that live this every day and and um, are dedicated to uh, to getting things done. That's it.
You don't have anything. <laughs> this is your opportunity. <coughs> you, you want to tell them that we canvassed the boats Friday? Oh, we did canvass the boats, and everything worked out, and it stayed the same. We didn't change any uh, races. Okay. Um, last night, we also had our annual FCDC banquet. Everything went well. Paul, do you have anything you want to put out there for the FCDC? I know all of us up here have, have talked and we're excited about uh, the future with the FCDC. Okay, it takes us to Commissioner comments and board reports. Who wants to start? Roy? Well, I didn't want to start, but I will. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, last week we went to the uh, Kansas Association of Counties annual meeting in uh, Wichita. Um, I was a little disappointed in the meeting itself because we're under new new leadership uh, and they kind of downsized on, on information they put out on each of our sessions. They didn't have a, the uh, presenter was working off a PowerPoint, but they didn't give uh, the attendees to a PowerPoint to follow along, so you had to take had to take notes and they talk so fast so it's hard to take uh, very good notes. I would have liked to have a PowerPoint on it, all the sessions I went to. One of the big things they emphasized was the 2020 census. Uh, they mentioned that several times, how it, how it would impact you if you had an undercount census. If you just had a 1% undercount of the census over a 10 year period it would be about six hundred and four million dollars that the state wouldn't get. So um, I need to be as accurate as possible when uh, they start doing the census. Uh, probably the uh, the um, important uh, session I went to was um, industrial hemp production. Anyway, that, they got a, a department, uh, Kansas State University as a head of the, that, that uh, area. And industrial hemp is, just listen to the uh, requirements and all the licensing and uh, re, uh, how it works. It seems like it's uh, something that's not, not for me personally because it's, too many licensing, too much license to get, too much uh, information you have to give, too much uh, requirements, and it uh, could be very lucrative, whoever does it, but it, industrial, any, um, I guess, marijuana plant is very difficult to grow. It's so sensitive to any kind of herbicide, any kind of insecticide, so you have to come, almost have a, an isolate, isolated uh, uh, area to plant it, and then then you have to have somebody to process it and to, uh, uh, do the whole the whole uh, part of, uh, of that that sort of industry. It's uh, uh, just something that's very difficult, and a person really needs to look into it. Before they uh, jump in and and do the hemp. Uh, let's see. The I went to the K camp and the K K works uh, sessions and both both K works and K camp are in, in good shape as far as uh, their um, reserves versus what they what they have to pay out every year and. They're getting more members every year. They picked up about three, three of K Camp and K Works both picked up about three members, three more states and and a city. So they're uh, uh, multi parallel uh, insurance companies. Uh, K 
he works uh, works with um, you know people like David. They come down there and do inspect safety inspections and that sort of thing. And they visited Ottawa eight times uh, last year to uh, uh, look over their operations, see if they can see any safety problems as far as equipment, and uh, give classes to the. Uh, operators uh, on various things and uh, last year the uh, K, K camp spent a lot of money on uh, weather related uh, claims um, last year was uh, unusually you know weather related and we had national emergency dec declarations but uh, you know FEMA's not going to pay for everything and usually they, they don't so uh, KCAP comes in and does a lot of cover stuff, and we can see it on uh, our roofs uh, that we've had hail damage on our roofs, and, and we've had uh, enough claims that we didn't get any awards on either K Works or K Camp for claims. So we got to try harder next year to get some of the awards they give out for no claims. Uh, there's more, there's more news on, or more rules on noxious weeds. Uh, they review the noxious weeds rules and regulations uh, periodically, and and they're going to come out with the more what the new rules are. Probably David will get those uh, sometime before next season. And the other the other big thing was. Uh, ACAMP comes out with their legislative advisory uh, uh, policy every year. And uh, some of the new things that uh, were significant was uh, this year's home rules for counties. Uh, there's a big push this year by KC for a uh, constitutional amendment to have. have uh, home rule for counties and uh, right now we're pretty much at the mercy of the uh, five big counties like Sedgwick County, Shawnee, Wyandotte and those counties, Johnson County and and since we're under statutory home rule one uh, whatever the state legislature does if it's all counties so whatever whatever those five big counties want the whole state is going to get practically that they have they have the legislative uh, c control in the uh, Kansas legislature so home rule be it more um, uh, the theory is it could help the smaller counties not have to deal with rules that the big the big counties uh, you know establish another, another big one is uh, all the dark store theory it's a uh, process where these big companies, big box stores, uh, casinos even, are being taxed by the local appraisers at fair market value. But the Board of Tax Appeals is using the dark, dark store theory where uh, we're going to evaluate you as, as if there was uh, no store there at all. And that's, and that's what they've been using, and a lot of uh, a lot of a lot of counties and cities are getting their <coughs> uh, taxes reduced when they don't go to appeal significantly, and now the cities and, and uh, counties are having to refund big big money to the school districts. The school districts have to, uh, you know, give money back. I don't know if uh, Mr. Cobb uh, experienced that here in our county, uh, having to give money back. <laughs> I did. <laughs> oh.
Hopefully not too much. Uh, let's see. Also, the, the policy statement uh, recommends Medicaid expansion, uh, more broadband access throughout the state, trying to get broadband to the rural areas, which is important to a lot of people. We experienced that last, last week. More money for mental health and jails. Also, they uh, are recommending not to allow, when a person gets, gets arrested, goes to jail, and they're sitting there waiting, waiting to get uh, sentencing, they want their health insurance extended until they get sentenced. Right now, it's uh, as soon as they go to jail, they they got some sort of health problem, and the county's been picking up the bill. So they want to have it continued uh, until they're getting sentencing. That's one of the initiatives, and, and I know Sheriff Richards worked worked on this uh, in the in the legislature. And of course, uh, they always have the uh, uh, all state and federal un unfunded mandates. They don't want to have any of those unfunded mandates uh, come down the pike without being funded if they want to pass a rule that need to be funded. I don't know. Uh, I think I'm going to quit now. I'll let some of these other people do a little more, and I can jump in later. So. Well, I did go to the Kansas Association of Counties conference last uh, last week. Um, still sorting through the information. I do have some ideas that I'm going to be bringing to staff, at least for us to consider. I'm not going to expand on all of that, but but it's not only just the me the meetings that you go to, but it's the it's the networking with the other commissioners. You know. You know, somebody said yesterday, you don't have to reinvent the wheel because a lot of them are already dealing with some of the things that maybe we are dealing with. Um, and it is good to just kind of compare our problems with theirs or compare what they're doing with what we're doing and, um, and just get out there and meet people. Uh, we did do the campus on Friday morning and that's always an eye-opening experience, how many boats that we go through there. Yesterday I had to go to the uh, summit that the health department put on and it was very well attended from people across the community and basically it was health and all policies so you know just to consider whatever you do it's kind of looking at the big picture you know it's not just focusing on this one little thing but how is it going to affect you know people how is it going to affect people's health and their well-being and all the things that are involved and i think not only health but maybe all of us expanding our our viewpoints um, and then went to the fcdc banquet last night and uh, we're all excited all excited all right i'm good been a handful of things that have been mentioned so i won't go over those i will say i uh, went to the county summit um sat down i was lucky enough to sit down with a handful of nursing students that midge brings in as interns and um we were discussing vaping and the um you know health problems it's causing how it really is a pandemic uh, among the youth it's been proven it's been uh, marketed to the youth it's a real health problem um we've talked about it before i think It'd be great if we could do something um, through policy at our level, but um, you know, um, discussions we've had before and what I thought a potential policy would be, and then it was really interesting to hear these young nursing students and you, you, being youth as well, um, what they thought absolutely wouldn't work. Um, some of the things I thought you know we probably would end up on, they changed my perspective. I mean, uh, that was that was really useful. I mean, kind of wasn't completely the. Uh, got some other value out of that as well as what you mentioned I am so um, really enjoyed that I only have reports on Wellsville City Mean because I was at KC and, and I'm not going Roy pretty well went over just that I I found some pretty interesting topics I attended the noxious weed laws new regulations em employment law updates uh, met with the secretary transportation state make new lady that's a and uh, census was a big topic uh, met with the uh, 
our Foley equipment. Kind of did a lot of talking about their uh, their uh, the new equipment and what they offer, and our sales guy that we work with and everything. They were uh, worked uh, went through the hemp with Roy, and the uh, main one I went to was uh, I went to the one on wind energy and solar because that's something that we hear right now. Are, and the the the, the uh, alliance that put it on really is uh, they're not uh, getting money from it. They're just kind of the helpers and regulators throughout the state. A lot of different companies have board mem members on there. And if if your entities are interested and, and uh, uh, are, are doing something, they come in. They'll be out for Farm Bureau's having them in in December. <clears throat> be out in the Ojo College. They'll probably be given the same seminar that they put on. But it's pretty in very interesting that there's somebody there giving a talk that's not there to install or make money from it. They're there just informational wise to help Kansas. Uh, the only other thing that I might mention that went to in the commissioner's meeting I didn't know existed. But there's actually, you can go get a degree in farming. And there's a school out in Riley County and it's sponsored by a, a gentleman who was a, a, a lieutenant colonel in the military out there and retired and he got this idea and uh, they bought, they got together and they bought 300 acres north of Riley, uh, the facility out there, and it actually has an 11-month course. And a veteran far, uh, getting out of the service can actually go to school there for 11 months. They have housing and, and they can get a degree in farming. Uh, and uh, so I really, and they have beekeeping school there. Uh, automotive school there. They divide the land all up in like 30 acres or 40 acres, and they do a different crop on every one. Not a big mass they deal, but gives them, and they live right there on the farm for 11 months and get their training and their education. And I know I mentioned here a while back, I know the RC and D's, the state, I helped get a $25,000 grant, and, and that's something I'm going to talk to them around their state meeting this weekend. Might be an interesting thing. I know I've been working with the Farmers Coalition to to help sponsor some uh, uh, some of the tuition for some of our local veterans coming back to go to this school, and so I'm going to meet with them this weekend and talk about maybe possibly using some of that money to help with that. I attended to help some of yesterday, well attended, appreciate the county and, and Derek and the whole and Midge and all of them for everything they did to put it on. I think the public was uh, very appreciative. That's all I got. Okay. Um, I attended most of the same things, the conference and the canvas, the votes and so forth. I did go to a Prairie Paws meeting back on November the 7th. We haven't had a meeting since. Um, attended a lot of the same workshops that uh, Roy and Don attended out at the uh, conference. Uh, one thing I was thinking is Roy said that the growers would be looking for uh, isolated areas. Uh, I think as long as I can remember, marijuana growers have looked for isolated areas. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I think this is for some different reasons. Uh, they did explain that the plants are very susceptible to other sprays and other uh, diseases from other crops. So that's why they will try to isolate their their crops on this. But anyway, so. Um, with that, uh, we have a commission uh, study session next Monday. We'll have a commission meeting on the 27th before we go out for Thanksgiving. And if there's nothing else, we'll uh, Larry wanted me to mention he's not here that they'll be having their meeting Thursday night also as a continuance on the wind energy and solar. And there is a lady coming. I talked to her on the phone yesterday. She's out of California. I'm not sure exactly what the company, but she will be there at the planning commission to discuss uh, the wind and solar energy. I'm going to meet with her tomorrow afternoon before she uh, just wanted to visit about the prospects of what the, her company has to do with this and what's going to go on. So we'll be talking to her tomorrow and she'll be in sometime. I think she said she gets in today. We'll be staying over in Ottawa and then be in here tomorrow and then may be interesting to hear what she has to say at the uh, Planning Commission meeting. So, right with that, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. 
I have a motion or a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Betsy, we are adjourned.